For many years, pawn e4 has reigned supreme as the absolute best and most common opening try. However, today you are going to learn how to siege their castle and decapitate every single one of their soldiers with e6, the French defense. Before we get into the video though, today we are sponsored by Chess Master. They have created an ebook full of openings that is perfect for beginners. I have looked it over myself. It is very good. You can use my code VOLKLUS at checkout for 15% off. That is V-O-L-C-L-U-S. I hope you have a great day and let's get right back to the video. The point of playing e6 here is we support the future pawn to d5 push, and after white goes pawn to d4 here, we play d5 right away. We're attacking their e4 pawn, and this is the branching point of the French defense. I'll take a look at e5, the advanced variation first, because it is most common. However, I do not consider it their best, because we can already play c5 here, attacking their center, and our plan here is very simple. We're going to add more and more pressure to their pawn. Here, if they, let's say, try to capture and try to get rid of the pressure right away, we can simply take back. We already have a great game here. Uh, our bishop is strong. Our development's easy. Big center. Their pawn also sucks. Yeah, we're doing great there. You can even try to guillotine them if you want some extra fun. However, C3 here is their much more common and better alternative defending their pawn with another pawn at which point you're going to add the pressure queen b6 like so i recommend starting with the queen just to eliminate any annoying bishop b5 stupid sidelines whatever and after knight to f3 this is basically unanimously played you'll go knight to c6 here and this is the branching point of the advance they have three main options here bishop e2 is the most low key of them and also not really that hard to face they're just trying to develop get castled be safe work a nine to five and have a nice and normal life however you're not going to let them you're going to capture on d4 they will take back and here knight g to e7 the point is you're going to rotate your knight to f5 and get another piece attacking d4 and if they just like castle here then after knight to f5, um, I mean, you're winning a pawn. They have no way to defend, only bishop e3, but then the pawn on b2 falls. So you can already win a pawn like that. Their best try is knight c3, and then the same thing doesn't really work because knight to a4 here, and you have to move your queen away. However, you can still play this check, and after, like, they have to drop back, Bishop b4, I mean, you're getting developed, you're going to castle very soon, and you have a very strong position with really nothing to complain about. Back here, their best try is likely to move a3, at which point we have a bit of an odd move. The point of a3 here is they're going to try and push b4, at which point we're going to be forced to get rid of our tension. However, we're going to play the move c4. This looks very odd because, I mean, back here, the whole point of our position is that we have a lot of pressure on d4, so why would we get rid of it? The point here is that now white has a massive hole on b3, and while our pieces were positioned to attack d4, they're also positioned to immediately get our knight to go to a5 and put the knight on b3. However, what you want to do here is you don't want to rush. If white just plays a move like bishop e2, don't hop in immediately. If you try to do this, then after, like, captures, uh, I mean, you try to capture the queen, takes, takes, this really doesn't help you. Also, knight to d2, and your pawn is lost. So, instead, just play another waiting move, bishop d7. And after, like, they castle, you keep developing, you'll get castled as well. If they play rook b1, you do have to be careful, because... If you do nothing, we're going to play b4, and our position is going to kind of fall apart. So what we play here is queen c7. This prevents b4, but not in a very obvious way, because if they play b4 here, you can now play en passant. Uh, I mean, French move in the French defense, awesome. But the point here is that after knight takes back, you can play bishop a4, get the pin, they must defend, and at the end of the day, who is defending c3? Not you, not me, not anybody, and I mean, yeah, that is a free pawn. 
instead their best move keep on making those waiting moves rookie one is best for them and we're also going to just keep on improving our position knight to f5 here they're likely going to back their knight up and try to get some kind of rotation like this maybe try to work on the king side and i mean whenever they move their knight away let your knight in as fast as possible there is nothing to wait for knight g3 here you can go ahead get this trade in and then simply play bishop e7 and you have a good life from here i mean they can play like this try to get something going but after a trade a simple h6 knight must back up you're doing well here you can castle short if you want uh engine even likes castles long which is a little crazy but i mean the point here with this being so solid and the knight too, nothing can actually break through on the king side. You likely try to break through in the center of potentially f6 at some point. Uh, yeah, you're doing well. Not too much to talk about in that position from there. And back here, they have one more option. This is probably the most dubious, but also simultaneously the most dangerous. That being uh, bishop to d3 the milner berry gambit with this move the point here is you're going to capture in d4 white will take back and you have to be careful my first ever video i made on this channel was about the milner berry gambit so i know about the tricks if you just try to capture right away this is the famous trap then after knight takes and queen takes bishop b5 check uh, and you lose your queen, you'll probably cry in a corner and potentially guillotine yourself. So do not do that. Instead, you're going to play bishop d7, block out the check. This way, this is actually a threat now. But after castles by them, you are going to capture the pawn. White will take back. You'll take back with the queen. Knight to c3 here by white. You need to be careful. If there is one thing I want you to take away from this portion of the video, do not capture the other pawn on e5. After rook e1, you are in for a world of pain, which you really do not want to deal with. Instead, a6, best move. Control b5, not let any pieces in. And at this point, by playing this kind of waiting move, you see that white does not actually have that much firepower in this position. Other than bishop e3 right away, which is not good because now you can take an e5, rook e1 doesn't come with tempo, so it doesn't work very well, they don't really have any like direct way to actually attack you. So here, after like queen e2 by white, you're just going to start getting your pieces out. Rook c8, get on the open c file. A very typical move for them here is king h1, and soon f4, I mean we'll keep developing, bishop c5 f4 we can now play knight to e7 and i mean yeah we have a good game here bishop d2 best try here that i like the most f5 just don't let them do anything and if they try to capture on passant you can now take back with your queen at which point you're doing very well here you can castle short uh very soon probably try to get your knight onto the f5 square you have a very good game Back here, however, they have one other thing they can try. Not c3, but instead knight to f3 right away. This is the Nimzovich system. It's lesser known, but it can be very strong. So what to play here, you're going to capture on d4. Most people take back with the knight. However, they have two other things they can try. They take with the queen, then after knight c6, bishop b5 pinning. You can then go knight to e7 quickly undo the pin with bishop b7 and after the trade here you want to capture with the c pawn that way you can always play a uh, c5 and attack their queen and here you have a nice little trick if they play knight c3 then after c5 here and queen takes you actually just have the move knight to f5 and their queen is trapped that is pretty surprising but i mean yeah the queen has no squares to go to that's a fun little queen trap to keep in mind but nice takes on d4 is the main move here at which point you'll keep developing knight to e7 knight to c3 knight b to c6 here bishop b5 pinning your knight to your king and once again you'll go bishop b7 capture 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 with the bishop and here after bishop to e3 capturing the pawn is also good by the way but i like capturing with the bishop uh bishop b3 you're doing well here queen c7 uh and a quick bishop b4 now you have this action going on you can potentially move your bishop to b5 to add even more pressure and attack their king side you are doing awesome back here let's take a look at the exchange variation where if they take on d5 this is commonly known as one of the more boring openings 
and while usually I don't agree, sadly here I do, after we take back, this is a pretty dry position. After knight to f3, you can basically just copy them, knight to f6, uh, bishop d3, bishop d6, castles, castles, let's say c3 here. Uh, you can try to play bishop g4, maybe get something like this, but sadly there's just not a lot of meat on the bone. After h3, bishop drops back to h5, bishop g5 here, you can play knight b to d7 to defend your knight for another knight. Knight goes here, c6, uh, queen c2, queen 7 This is a very, very even game. Try to get your rooks on the open file, and I mean, you're doing fine here. Really nothing to complain about. Um, the only thing you might have to watch out for a little bit is the Monte Carlo variation with c4. This is a bit underrated. What to do here? You need to play bishop b4 check. Immediately disrupt them. They're going to block with their knight. And here you can now play knight to f6, knight to f3, you will castle. Whenever they move their light squared bishop, that is your cue to capture them. That way you basically just waste a move, which is just kind of annoying. You can now play knight c6, put some pressure on their center, they will castle. You can now play bishop g4, get the pin like so. And after bishop e3, you can play queen d7. You're doing fine here. Uh, once again, it's not like an incredible, awe-inspiring position, but you don't really have any problems. You have a nice pin here. They have an isolated queen pawn, so what you want to do at some point uh, is likely play a move like trading the knight. They will capture back and then plop your own knight onto d5. And from here, you're doing good. Not too much to talk about. Let's move on. Next, let's take a look at knight to d2. This is the Tarash variation. Defending their pawn on e4 with their knight on d2 looks a little awkward, but this is a very good uh, variation for them. What to play here is you want to go c5. The open variation, the point here is you're just trying to blow up the center and get everything gone. They have three options here. C3 is what a lot of people try. If they play this, you're gonna capture on D4. They will take back. You can then take on E4. They will take back. You can then play the check on B4. They will drop their knight back to C3. Uh, if they try Bishop D2, by the way, then a queen takes on d4 is just a free pawn, so keep that in mind. Knight c3 drops back. You can then simply develop here. Knight of 6, knight of 3, uh, castles, bishop d3. The key move you do want to know here, though, is b6. This bishop really, really belongs on diagonal. Bishop d7 is not a good home. And after castles by them, bishop b7 will soon put our knight on d7, our queen on c or e7. We're doing good here. Uh, it's not like, you know, an incredible awe-inspiring position. It is good, though. I like it. Yeah, not too much to talk about. Let's back up a little bit. If they try to develop their other knight, let's say knight g to f3 here, you can capture on d4. They will take back with their knight. By the way, if they try to take on d5 here, then after you take back the queen, this transposes into the main line, which we'll look at in a second. Knight will capture back. Knight c6 here going for this trade, bishop b5 pinning, bishop d7 on pinning, knight takes on c6, here you'll take back with your pawn, if they try taking with their own bishop, it's not that good, because after you take back uh, castles, we can always play c5, and it comes with tempo, which is just bad for them, they're going to have to lose a very large stake in their center and give it to us, instead knight takes, we take back with the b pawn, their bishop will back up, bishop d6, and from here the game is pretty simple, castles, queen c7, h3, because this was being threatened, knight to f6, and after captures, you can take back with your c pawn, and you're doing good here, you can castle, you have a nice and good position, you also have the open or semi-open b and c files to potentially play with, you're doing good, you're doing well, you're doing fun back here again the main line here is for them to now capture us on d5 and unlike basically every other line where they capture you don't want to take back the pawn but instead the queen because now it kind of sees and controls everybody if they take again c5 
and then you can take back with the bishop once again this is just good for you so instead knight g to f3 is better at which point you'll take on d4 despite giving you a pawn white can now play bishop c4 and they have a decent position here because they have a good amount of compensation in return but after queen d6 let's say they castle we can go knight to f6 and knight to b3 they're basically always going to win the pawn back do not get greedy just let them have it after like knight c6 knight will capture you can uh, take them takes a6 you have a good game here once again controlling that very important b5 square rookie one queen c7 you can just back up get out of the way bishop b3 bishop d6 attack h3 castle you're doing fine here not much to talk about the tarash is a good but not really too strong of an option next up we have knight to c3 the main line this is probably the most complicated out of all of them and the move i recommend here is not bishop before the winner i know people like this option but the problem i have with it is i've looked at some of the variations and they get so incredibly complicated it is basically uh like impossible to understand unless you're a master instead i recommend knight to f6 the classical variation kind of mirroring them on the other side and what to do here they have two moves they can push up to e5 and go into a kind of advance or bishop g5 here bishop g5 is trying to pin you and what you're going to do is you're going to mirror them again bishop b4 the mccutcheon variation is like counter pinning them this gets a bit crazy first off they capture on d5 here you don't want to take back the pawn instead the queen is best because after captures uh here you can take this guy with a check now takes and takes although your position looks a bit odd with this ruin structure they also have a ruin structure but after queen d2 you can go knight c6 and you're going to strike in the center likely with e5 and surprisingly you can probably go bishop b7 and a long castle in some of these positions which can get very fun or you can actually just stay in the middle because your king is surprisingly safe here as well instead of that e5 main move trying to attack your knight it's pinned oh no what do we do we play h6 attacking their bishop where will they move it but they have some other options too if they try to capture our knight then after takes takes and rook g8 you are completely fine here the pawn will be lost and uh yeah you're doing very well uh if they try to back up to h4 and try to like do the pin stuff then g5 now attacking them bishop g3 your knight can launch into the center on e4 attack the pin attack their bishop attack their f2 pawn you're doing well and finally here after this bishop d2 unpinning is their best option and what you'll play from here is you're going to capture they will take back and once again knight e4 launching your knight into the outpost queen g4 is probably their strongest try here bishop d3 also comes pretty often it's not as good though you can trade queen takes and simply castles here and there's actually really not that much for them h6 prevents any greek gift sacrifice and yeah you're doing well queen g4 is their strongest try trying to attack g7 which can get awkward but what you'll play here is a simple g6 just block out their queen and here in some scenarios g6 can be very weakening but here it's completely fine bishop d3 now you can capture king will take back and now c5 the typical french move once again you are attacking their center if they take you then knight d7 and i mean this is just embarrassing this pawn's hanging this pawn's hanging and they have tripled pawns they're probably going to cry in a corner or blow up uh, or implode all of them is probably what's going to happen at once h4 trying to push up and get something going on however you will now play knight to c6 knight to f3 you can trade in center your queen can now launch out to a5 and after c3 here you can play b6 this is where i'll end but the point here is you're going to go bishop a6 and you're going to long castle and once again we get a situation where even though you're long castling when your king is kind of open on that side it is completely fine for you that is bishop g5 in the kind of mccutcheon variation that was e5 immediately is a more common option which is a different game you'll now back your knight up to d7 
after f4 here if they do nothing then once again we'll play c5 in the same way we're crushing them but f4 c5 and the point of f4 here is they're reinforcing their center more meaning sometimes it can actually get rid of this pawn and be fine also f5 might be scary knight f3 knight c6 we keep developing the same old same old bishop e3 now we can play queen b6 this is where it gets tricky you're attacking the b2 pawn and without a good way to defend it they're likely going to actually let you have it first i'll take a look at queen d2 if they play this you're going to capture the pawn rook b1 here you simply slide your queen over to a3 and although they are playing a gambit, white has to try very hard here because your position actually is quite solid and not really that unsafe. If they just play a move like bishop b5 here, you can then play a6, force this trade. You're doing completely fine. You're doing good here. You're up a pawn. You have a solid position. Uh, you can even probably uh, push up to c4, close everything down or trade, open it up. You're doing awesome. I mean, yeah, not too much to complain about. Knight b5 is their best move here to attack your queen, uh, but you'll simply capture on a2. Their rook is now under attack, so they can't really fork us because we would just slide over. Now they have two things attacked. That's not working out well. Uh, they would probably move the rook over, and the best move here is now capture on d4, attacking like this. Once again, they can't really go for the check quite yet. And here, now simply rook b8. Just slide your rook over. This check, king walks over, knight drops back to b5, and a6. Remember, even though here, yeah, your king is a little unsafe, it's not really that unsafe, and you have two whole pawns for it, so you're doing quite well. Knight d6 here, and after the trade, you can go queen to a3. The pawn's likely going to be lost. Although your king is still a bit unsafe, you'll probably be up three pawns, which is just kind of ridiculous, and you're doing awesome in that position. Two other lines. A3 is a tricky line. Do not capture the pawn on B2 because knight A4 and your queen is trapped, which would be very, very sad. Instead, capture on D4. They will take it back. Bishop C5, and now knight to A4 is their best try. To kind of fork us here, you're going to play this check. C3. And the best move here is to trade in d4, trade again in d4, and that same move we saw in a couple of variations, b6. We want to try and launch our bishop out this way, which can get very bad for them. After bishop d3, we can play bishop a6. If they just castle here, this is a blunder, because takes, takes, and that is a free knight. Their queen here can get overloaded in multiple scenarios. So instead, their best move is to trade. You'll capture back the queen, and now you're just doing quite well here. Uh, you can castle short, likely. Uh, I mean, yeah, you're doing well. Let's move back here. And lastly, their main move here is knight to a4 immediately, attacking your queen and the pawn, at which point it's kind of similar to the other one. You'll play the check, but here, c3, and once again, b6. The same move, uh, bishop a6 will likely happen, plus you get some extra uh, reinforcement. Bishop d2, trying to get some stuff going on here is the best try, but c4, shutting it down. b4 here, and you might notice, isn't our queen getting trapped? Yes, but we don't care. We're going to sack the knight. Capture, bishop takes on b4. This is getting pretty crazy, but after queen c2... And this happens, we can now push up to b5, knight must back up, push up to b4, knight must back up, and now queen b6. This is where I'll leave you off. Although you are down one point of material here, you'll quickly go a5, and you have two connected, or I guess really only one, but like you'll have a ton of extra pawns on the queen side, which in all end games is going to be a hassle. And if we go into the white side here, yeah, we're up a piece, but our position sucks. This knight sucks. This knight sucks. This bishop isn't developed. Uh, we don't really want to castle short, but if we castle long, uh, everything is going bad for them, and you are doing awesome here. All right, before I let you go, I have two more smaller variations for you. First off, knight to f3 immediately, and after we play d5 here, 
if they just trade then this will go into the exchange variation but instead here knight c3 this is the two knights variation which can get a bit tricky what to play here you're gonna go knight to f6 just attack the pawn and get your own pawn reinforced if they trade once again exchange variation however if they push up the knight drops back to d7 this is now under attack and after d4 we play c5 and we get kind of a like uh, advanced variation however their knight is already on c3 which is just worse there needs to be a pawn c3 to like reinforce it if they try to defend with bishop e3, they can simply play knight c6 here. You're completely fine. I mean, bishop b5 here, you can play a6. And at the end of the day, even though here you're temporarily down one pawn, just capture back right away. The extra c pawn will eventually push right back up, and you are doing awesome. If they try bishop g5 to attack queen, just pop it out to b6. Uh, and here, I mean, they probably have to capture. You can take back with the bishop, queen d2. Their position is kind of falling apart. You don't have to take uh, right away, though. You can play knight to c6 first. And just keep on going and playing and developing. What did I just do? Oh <laughs> my! Back here, knight to a4 is a bit tricky. However, you have a nice move here. Capture, queen takes, queen before check. Knight drops back to c3, you have a fork, and then you can take on uh, b2 like so. And you're going to win the piece back, you're doing very well. Lastly here, if they try to capture on c5 right away and get rid of everything, once again, it will not work out well. You can take back right away, but even better, delay for a second. Knight c6, bishop f4, you can take back on c5 with the knight, and after development happens, castle, castle, you're doing very well capture right away the best move is to play c5 and get this action going on if they capture the pawn then this is bad you can take an e4 bishop will take back and then you can go for the queen trade capture bishop takes you're doing well not too much to talk about there or if they try to take on d5 this is their best move but it is still good for you you take back of the pawn they take bishop takes back and now it's kind of like an exchange but just a little bit better for you uh this happens capture castle we're doing well all right well thank you so much for watching i uh, hope you all have a great day uh channel members pick future opening videos shout out to my one member also check out the chess master website where you can go ahead and use my code volklist to get 15 percent off of their complete beginner ebook i hope you have a great day and i will see you next time